This brings me to the last part of tonight. The organic food industrial complex. Why do I call it that? We've already considered, for the most part of tonight, what happens when conventional agriculture goes large. Genetic modification, pesticides, land use, water use, etc. All these problems compound when we start to grow millions of acres of anything. So somebody, the, the pushback on this is, let's grow organic food. Okay, less pesticides. Actually, they say no pesticides, no synthetic pesticides, no synthetic fertilizer, and no GMOs. I want to consider this one step at a time. We can go with conventional farming or organic farming. Michael Pollan's book, Omnivore's Dilemma, takes us from seed to table. And these products, conventionally farmed, where he buys his own cow and goes, watches it being fed in a, and led to a slaughterhouse. And he does the same thing with grass-fed beef. Uh, it's an excellent read. I, I, I think uh, it's challenging when you look at the position that he takes about large-scale agriculture. So organic farming. No synthetic pesticides. Okay, the operative word there is synthetic. It doesn't mean no pesticides. Organic growers can use pesticides, ones that are deemed organic. What's an organic pesticide? Well, Bt spores. You can take Bt spores, the gene of which was cloned out and put into Bt corn, but you can take Bt spores and use them on your tomato crop and call that organic. Copper sulfate can be used to treat fun as a fungicide, uh, Bordeaux mixtures, etc. That's, that's okay. No synthetic fertilizer. So in other words, no ammonia made by the Haber-Bosch reaction, but processed manure is good. So let's think about this a second, both of these things. No synthetic pesticide. I already mentioned the toxic load that's incurred by our environment by continuously spraying synthetic pesticides. It's building up. We have pesticide residues. Certainly to lower this has got to make common sense as being a good thing. That's a good thing. Can we grow the crops we want to now on a large scale without it? That'd be a challenge. But to reduce pesticide load, that might be worth the challenge. To reduce its effects pleiotropically on our ecology, that might be worth the idea. Rachel Spring showed this to be the case. Synthetic fertilizer, as I mentioned, the consequence of ammonia dumping into the Mississippi River and flowing out into the delta has had a severe environmental consequence. The Green Revolution may not have happened without synthetic fertilizer. Synthetic fertilizer probably owed much to saving many starving people in many developing countries. So what is allowed? Treated organic fertilizers. This might be good for soil reclamation, putting back into the soil nutrients and recovering a soil ecology that is more beneficial towards sustainability. I can tell you this, however, I really strongly doubt as a plant biologist that a plant can recognize the difference molecularly from nitrogen from miracle Grow and nitrogen from cow manure. Nitrogen would be nitrogen at the molecular level to the plant. No GMOs. Why? Really, given what we know now, based on he safety, relevance to the environment, etc., why does the organic industry say no GMOs? And this brings up some questions. The organic industry is a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Are they altruistic? It's a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Do they have your health 
interest in mind, the consumer interest in mind, it's a product. Is it better for you? What's the evidence? Wait, is it better for you? Now this is an interesting question too. To lower pesticide impact certainly could be an achievable goal that might have positive health-related consequences. Is it better for you? I think that sometimes there may be an effect from people who do things that are positive for them that spills over into other positive aspects. In other words, people that are eating organic might be doing other positive health-related things in their lives. Uh, maybe they're exercising more. Maybe they're avoiding other um, compounds or other things in their lives that may have deleterious effects. Maybe they, they're not smoking tobacco. Maybe they're not drinking alcohol. Maybe you know, they're living a lifestyle that is consistent with an organic attitude, if you will. So in that way, maybe organic food is better. They're going to yoga class more. But is the organic food really more nutritious? I wonder. Is it better for the environment? Lowering pesticides is good. Soil reclamation is good. Is it safer? Hmm. By the way, getting back to that, is it better for the environment? I didn't mean to uptick on the last part of that sentence there because I think overall we could say there are very positive aspects to organic agriculture, for sure. But is it safer? This is debatable. As I stated earlier, there's not one substantiated health-related consequence to humans from GMOs that I know about. Can the same be said of organic food? In 2004, 2005, somewhere around there, earthbound farms had an E. coli outbreak in the Salinas Valley that resulted in over 1,600 hospitalizations and six deaths. That was an organic food operation. Was it because it was grown organically? I don't know. Certainly, there have been incidences of untreated fertilizers that have resulted in health-related consequence. So people have been sickened from organic food. People have died from eating organic food. I don't know if that's simply the organic practice. In some case, it may be. But it certainly hasn't impacted the public perception on health-related aspects concerning organic food. Are organic foods really better for you? By limiting synthetic fertilizer and no GMOs, can that possibly have a health-related consequence? And what is a natural food? I think the onus should be on a billion-dollar industry to provide this information and make it public. What the consumer really wants is not what's not included, no pesticides, no synthetic fertilizer, no GMOs. I think we should have a movement that wants clean, safe food, well-produced, clean, safe food. Instead of negatively, we don't want this, positively, what would make clean, safe food that's more nutritious? Is that too much to ask, really? Treating it like a pharmaceutical rather than uh, just an afterthought. We regulate pharmaceuticals heavily. and We put food into our bodies every day. Whole Foods, the company, responds with this no GMO ingredient statement. The consumer has the right to know. And so no GMOs. Is organic more nutritious? 68% of the respondents in a recent U.S. poll said a product labeled USDA certified organic would indicate the food was safer than non-organic food. That's not true. 
67% believe the label would indicate food of a higher quality than non-organic food. What shows that? 62% believe the label would mean the food is more healthful for consumers than non-organic food. What's the data? Who's doing these studies? Are they more nutritious? The head of the U.S. Organic Trade Association recently had to admit that organic food was no more nutritious than any other food and that organic food standards had nothing to do with food safety. Is organic food better for the environment? Is the organic solution viable for sustainable world agriculture? Organic advocates would argue that it, yes, Wiser land use, less pesticides, more biodiversity. Sustainable agriculturalists would argue that feeding humanity from organic fields would mean cropping twice as much land as we currently use. Is this a viable alternative? And what about the ecological effects? Are there unknown risks to the environment? Pesticides kill indiscriminately, as we know. Is organic food safer? Safer in terms of human safety. On the, um, on the left side of this slide is our examples of wild type corn, that's genetically not modified corn, variety with a secondary fungal infection uh, that you can see is this black uh, contamination near the apex of each ear. On the right side is BT corn that's resistant to the corn borer. Now, as I show, this is resistant against the U European corn borer. It's an insect. It's not, an ins it's, not, it's not a fungus. But wait a minute. How come, then, the BT corn doesn't have the fungus? Well, because the fungus is communicated by the European corn borer when it traipses around on the inside with fungal spores all over its dirty little legs and you get this contamination of fungus. So by limiting the European corn borer, we also eliminate the fungus without an, a fungicide. So the one on the right being organic, now you are exposed to this fungus and you might say, well, hey, the fungus is organic. We eat fungus. Wait a minute. Some fungi contain mycotoxins that are carcinogenic aflatoxins also. So while the organic standards may attempt to ensure freedom from pesticide residues, the freedom of organic foods from vermin, mycotoxins and other camp contamination may be less certain. Perhaps new organic food standards should contain their own warning labels. Warning. This food may contain organic products. Organic products are not necessarily tastier, healthier, or pesticide free. The organic agriculture is not a safety food claim by the FDA either. So last night, Kimberly Nelson and I went to a grocery store in Westerly, and she pushed one cart and I pushed the other. And in my cart, I put all conventionally grown materials. And in her cart, we made the organic counterparts. Now, we just didn't willy-nilly pick organic stuff and non-organic stuff. So you'll see in this display, Raisin Bran is here, and Raisin Bran is here. We have the organic side. And it's the same size container. So we have uh, romaine lettuce in a group of three here that's conventionally grown. And we have earthbound farm organic lettuce here, and so on. So you can see we did this with all kinds of products, from apples that were organically grown to tomatoes. Um, yeah, I can't fit this back on here. Um, organic uh, spinach, organic celery, conventional celery, conventional spinach, broccoli. Uh, we've got peanut butter made by Skippy and organic peanut butter 
made by Arrowhead Mills. We've got Earthbound Farm Organic Raisins, and we've got Sunmade Raisins. Mott's Applesauce and Santa Cruz Organic. I think I've made my point. We went up to the, we got bananas and we got apple juice. We got Kraft Macaroni and Cheese versus Back to Nature Macaroni and Cheese. So we tried to do a pretty large diversity of products. The division would be right here. So um, this slide shows you the price comparison. Having the same exact list of products here and here, uh, the price evaluation as of um, June 6, 2012, and conventional versus organic is shown here where the conventional price tag was $96.22 this side and $149.22 on this side. Why is organic food so expensive? Is that a production issue? Is that a pricing issue? Is that a market price point? Who can afford to buy it and why do they do that? Is organic production viable on a large scale, really? Are GM crops a threat to biodiversity? Does local food production really lower carbon footprint? Does organic food really lower your exposure to pesticides? Okay, I think um, that would conclude our section then on concerns and issues about ag biotech as it relates to large scale agriculture and food production in the United States. And I can think that you would see that this is a complicated topic, that this is not merely black and white. And if you address this opinion with uh, any friend at a local restaurant or pub, I think you'll be in for a complicated discourse. So have at it and uh, go out there with informed opinions. Thanks.